Hello and welcome to the program Spotlight on Catholic Television of Nigeria. Today we have in our studio um, a very important person in the country. He is a senator representing the good people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. He is a former chairman of APGA, but today he is with the Labour Party. He is also the chairman a Senate Committee on Diaspora. He is a father, a knight in the Catholic Church, and a devout Catholic. He is Senator Victor Wume, OFR. Senator, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you very much. You, can you please take us through your growing up, how it has been? <laughs> we know you wear a lot of caps these days. How <laughs> did it start? That's a long story, and um, well, uh, I was born in the year 1962, precisely on the 19th day of July um, of that year. Um, I, I, I grew up um, from my community. I hail from uh, Aglozibo uh, in the present day and ultra local government area of Anambra State. I attended uh, the Catholic primary school in my community, St. Bridget Primary School, uh, Aglusibo, which later was changed to Iguamaka Primary School when the, the military decided to change the names of all the schools uh, after the war, you know. So, but uh, the school is known as St. Bridget Primary School. From there, I went to uh, another Catholic school Bubendorf Memorial Grammar School, uh, named after uh, late father uh, Bubendorf, an Irish priest. That was where I did my secondary school education and I graduated from there in 1980, from where I proceeded to the University of Nigeria and Soka, where I read estate management and graduated in, the, in June 1984. From there, I moved on into professional uh, practice and from there to other activities till date. Um, growing up um, was very, um, very remarkable because um, just about um, five years or so um, after I was born, the Nigerian Civil War broke out in 1967. So for three years, uh, as a little boy, uh, I was hopping around with my parents uh, during the war, you know, uh, moving from one place to the other uh, to survive the war. And when the war ended in 1970, we, we, I started my formal education. So um, I had a lot of experiences during the war as a young, young boy, as a little boy. Uh, because I was eight years when the war ended. But um, the um, life-threatening experience we had during the war uh, will always almost make me uh, like uh, I'm 30 years old because our, our wits were developed to be able to survive uh, the war. Um, I was born into a very strict Catholic family. Um, my, my parents were very strong and active uh, church workers. My mother was uh, a church warden. My father was um, at various times um, uh, vice chairman of the pastoral par parish council, you know. So our life revolved around the church. I was a mass server okay. uh, as a child. Uh, even before I, I got into the secondary school, when I where I served mass all through for five years, uh, because of our um, our very strong Catholic background, uh, very early I, I, I was uh, a member of the Legion of Mary, from primary school to secondary school, you know, and up to today uh, I'm a very strong Marian devotee. Uh, luckily, I also married a young woman uh, from a very strong Catholic family, and um, uh, she had 
my kind of upbringing um, in terms of devotions. So my wife is also a very strong uh, modern devotee and uh, a member of the our mother of perpetual help uh, prayer group and so on and so forth. So that has been our lot. And uh, we, from there, we've never for any time had any break with our um, spiritual growth and development in the church. In, in 2001, I was initiated into the ancient and noble order of Knights of St. John International. Um, uh, I chose to join that order because of the life of the patron saint of Knights of St. John International, St. John the Baptist, you know. So um, all my uh, activities have been uh, um, moderated by my Catholic faith, you know, my upbringing and uh, the life I live till the present day. So um, when I finished my youth service, I went into um, uh, my profession. I had to go through the, uh, the pupillage necessary for one to qualify as a professional. Um, uh, I, worked, I worked with the firm of um, ACO Table and Partners, a firm of Estates of Wealth and Values, uh, representing the firm in Enugu. The head office was in Lagos then, you know. Uh, but later on, by 1999, I had uh, been registered as, uh, um, as an estate survey and value. I practiced that profession. That was one of my main work until I joined politics around 1998, you know. And uh, <laughs> from there, something I started uh, casually. Yeah. I've been enmeshed in it for a long time. I've been involved in active politics in Nigeria for over 23 years now, or 24 years, you know, and I've been to various levels um, in my political career. Uh, I was a founding member of the PDP, the People's Democratic Party, and uh, I resigned from that party uh, shortly after. Um, by 2001, I had resigned, and I joined a progressive uh, like myself in terms of looking at things to register the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. And that was a party that I, I spent, I've spent uh, most of my time um, in it. Um, I was its first uh, national vice chairman for Southeast Nigeria. Later on, I was the national treasurer. And from there, I became the acting national chairman and uh, from becoming the acting national chairman, I became the national chairman for 10 years, from 2005 to 2015. And uh, within this period, I was able to use the party to get three people elected as governors in Nigeria. The first was uh, Mr. Pitobi, His Excellency Mr. Pitobi, um, who, uh, under my chairmanship, became governor for two terms in office, eight years. He served in Anambra State. I uh, also got Rocha Sokorocha elected governor in Imo State through Abga. And in 2013, when P2B's tenure uh, ran out, we used that same party to elect Governor Julio Biano, uh, who served for eight years. Uh, by then, uh, I had, uh, my tenure had lapsed in 2015. But I stayed in the party, playing very pivotal roles in helping to build the party. Um, and in 2021, I also led the party in a very strong uh, movement that bettered the government of uh, uh, Professor Charles Chukuma Saludo, who is now the governor of the state. In between this time, um, I have come to the Senate here uh, uh, for the tenure of 2015 to 2019. Um, uh, my, the, uh, my stay in the Senate was just for 17 months then because most of my, most part of my tenure was eaten by un unnecessary litigation. Okay. But when uh, the hurdles were cleared, I came here and after 17 months, the tenure lapsed, you know. I, I couldn't come back in 2019, but as God willed it in 2023, I won again 
to come back to represent my people in the Senate, in this 10th Senate. I've been here since 13th of uh, June, June when we were sworn in. And um, with a um, special grace of God, I've also been able to weather through the litigations again, one at the tribunal and one at the Court of Appeal. So I'm here now for a secure term of four years to serve my people here. Uh, now, I, it's no longer news that you are, you are a very strong Catholic. Yeah. So how do you think your Catholic faith can help you as a Catholic politician? <laughs> well, um, all my actions have been moderated by my faith. Uh, first of all, um, um, in 2001, I, 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 I chose to join the Knights of St. John International, that order, uh, because of um, the patron saint, John the Baptist. And I'm sure um, the story of John the Baptist is well known to you. Um, John the Baptist was uh, a man who was very stubborn in defense of the truth. Uh, he spoke the truth, and uh, uh, at the risk of his life, he still spoke the truth. When he told King Herod that um, he should not take over his brother's wife, he was arrested and put in prison because he told the king that what he was doing was uh, wrong. He shouldn't uh, take his brother's wife, you know. And um, of course, that angered the king. So he was arrested and they put in prison. Um, when um, the woman uh, who was actually very upset with the audacity with which John the Baptist uh, condemned their act. Uh, she was looking for an opportunity to take um, a, a, a vengeance on him. And it came when the daughter had her bed there. Yeah. You know, and um, on, on her bed there, she went to the king and said, today is my birthday. And the king said, yes, very good. Uh, what will I do for you? He said, excuse me. She ran to her mother and told the mother that the, uh, the king had asked her to request anything. And he would do it for her. The mother said, OK, go and ask him for the head of John the Baptist, who was already in prison. So she ran back and said to the king, I want the head of John the Baptist. So the king ordered that John the Baptist should be brought before his court. He was brought. And the king told him, yes, today is uh, a, a momentous day for you. Uh, can you withdraw your statement or your accusation of me or your condemnation of my relationship with uh, this young girl's mother. Then the Baptist said, no, I cannot. He said, no, if you say it, if you withdraw that statement, we'll let you go. If you don't withdraw it, there's a, a demand for your head. He said, no, I will not. I will not. I will not withdraw it. It's still wrong for you to take your brother's wife. So the king said, you still you are still bold to tell me this when I have power over your life. I said, no, so be it. Uh, I'll speak the truth and I stand by what I've told you. It is wrong for you to take your brother's wife. So John the Baptist said, okay, since that's what you want, this girl has demanded your head and uh, take him away and go and cut his head and, and give to this girl. He was led away. He, he didn't shake. He went and uh, they tied him and beheaded him. That's why when you see the insignia of Knights of St. John, is a head that is severed from the body. So his head was put on the platter and given to the girl. The girl took to her mother. So St. John the Baptist died in defense of the truth. He didn't care whether it would take his life. So when I wanted to join the knighthood, 
because this one is a voluntary uh, uh, membership. I looked at the life of the saints. I looked at the life of St. Matthias Mulumba, a very wonderful, great man and saint who had a very unique story of his deep faith in God also. And uh, I said, okay, either of the two, but let me go with the Knight of St. John because I was already in politics. By the year 2001, I had been in politics. So I said, in this political life, I will speak nothing but the truth and let St. John the Baptist be my inspiration. The life he lived, life of courage to speak the truth to the king. Let me join the Order of Knights of St. John International. That's how I became a Knight of St. John. And I've never lost um, uh, that in me that the patron saint was killed because he refused to withdraw what was right yeah. you know, for, her, for his personal safety. He put himself there and they died from there. So I said, let it be uh, my guide. And I've been doing that. So uh, if you have noticed my political journey, if you have followed me in the past 24 years, I've always spoken against injustice in Nigeria. I've always spoken against oppression. I've always spoken in defense of the weak, uh, people who are discriminated against. I've always preached the equality of all persons, civic rights, and so on and so forth. So, and um, this is uh, something you can do if you have that type of faith. So as I'm sitting here, I don't fear anything. I can tell anybody anything, so long as it is the truth. And uh, when you want to intimidate me or do all kinds of things against me, I, I usually accept to go through persecution. I suffer persecution, and one of the politicians have suffered the greatest persecution in Nigeria. I do so, and I do so happily, because I know that there is no substitute to speaking the truth. Because of the life I have, I have uh, lived um, as, a, as a Catholic Christian in politics, uh, the things I've been doing are easily noticed, particularly within the circles of the church. Uh, within the Catholic Church in Nigeria, I've, virtually all the bishops know me in Nigeria because uh, I'm deeply involved in the activities of the church. I, I support the Lady Council. I support uh, all the lay apostolate organizations in the church. I have also, in my own way, contributed towards the development of the church. I built two Catholic churches. I built one in Cameroon. You know, a priest that was uh, on mission in the Cameroon came to visit me in 2016 or 17. And uh, he showed me a mud house that they used as the church where he, he, he was on mission at um, Nkimishi in the Manfe Diocese of Cameroon. So I said, mud house? If you saw the mud table and uh, the altar, I said, how are you worshiping God here? It looks, this looks like a shrine. It cannot be said that the people uh, are so poor. I said, okay, go, I'll build a church for them. He, he was surprised because he came to ask me for help okay. to give him money to help him go on pilgrimage. So, and I saw the pictures he used to prove to me that, uh, that he is indeed a Catholic priest. So I said, no go back, we'll build a church for them. And I was happy that we were able to build a very good church for them. Um, and the church was dedicated in 2020, you know. I've also built another big church, Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church, in my alma mater, that's the Bendorf Mira Grammar School, where I told you I did my secondary education. So these are the things I've been doing. I've contributed towards uh, 
doing uh, many other projects, assisted in building other projects for various parishes and the church. You know, in 2016, Pope Francis um, uh, 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 gave me the papal knighthood, um, Knight of Saint Sylvester. Uh, um, the investiture was done in, in May 2017. So uh, I'm, I'm here as a Catholic. Um, one thing that I'm very proud of um, are the teachings of the church, particularly the the uh, the ways of worship and uh, devotions. You can. Can, can deepen your faith in God. For the night of St. John, uh, we say that uh, we run our Christian race through the practice of faith, hope, and charity. These are the three things. In the night of St. John, for you to be a good Christian, you have to be faithful, um, one to the Holy Catholic Church, the Blessed Trinity, the, uh, our Blessed Mother Mary, you know, and they've all been significant parts of my life. I do a lot of charity work. I have a scholarship foundation which I've trained over 300 university graduates. You know, because some of these things are things you do to lift other people. You know, so um, that's been my, my passion. Okay. So as a, as a Catholic, um, I, I take issues of faith very strongly in all my engagements. Um, that, like I told you from the beginning, my faith has helped in moderating my actions. So I will always stand where I am convinced that this is the right thing to do. Okay, as a senator, you must be a very busy person. Indeed. And there are other Catholic senators around uh, the National Assembly. So what kind of uh, pastoral care do you think the church can extend to uh, Catholic politicians in the National Assembly? Well, we, we have uh, different levels of engagement. One, primarily as Catholics, we, we belong to different parishes, both at home and here in Abuja. So um, because of um, the associations I belong to, I am very deeply involved in the activities of the church, you know. Um, those other ones who are here, I think we're about 20-something in the 10th Senate. Catholic faithfuls here, we're about 20-something. The last time I checked, we were 21 or 22. Um, but um, I, I don't know whether more people have added their names in the register. So the pastoral care is uh, uh, most welcome in the area of trying to, to bring them closer to the church through inviting them to programs. Like when the Catholic Bishops Conference had their, their last uh, conference here, I was actively involved in that. You know, uh, when you get closer, I think that was where I met you for last yeah, at uh, Holy Trinity Parish in Maitama. That's my parish now. So um, when you may bring out your time and get close to the church, you will never lose. You will never go astray. You will always, if you relate with your priests, your bishops, your local ordinary, you will always be in the presence of God in your undertakings. You know, one you through them you get um, the the real feel of how the people are. You know uh, what you should be doing. You go to the church, you listen to hom homilies, and uh, that will always uh, put you in the sight of God. You can't you can't go extreme, can't go out of the presence of God. And uh, for me, I'm a miraculous person. Because, uh, because I'm a very strong uh, Marian devotee, uh, I've never been stranded okay. as a politician. Most things that concern me are wonders and puzzles to people who look at us. 
But my miracles come from um, the Blessed Trinity and the special devotion to our Mother Mary. You know, so I encourage people who are Catholics to take their spiritual lives more um, deeply. Um, in Nigeria, um, uh, people know me as uh, as a Knight of St. John International. I don't hide my identity. I flaunt my Catholicism. Um, in the Knights of St. John, uh, I've risen to the rank of a colonel in that order. I'm a papal knight. In 2018, in the Senate here, when two Catholic priests and 17 worshippers and the catechists were killed in Benue State during morning mass. Yeah. Yes. I, I stood up in the plenary here, in the chamber, and announced to the world that I'm a Catholic, and I'm a Papa Knight of the Catholic Church, and condemned the killings of the priests and the worshippers, and called on uh, President Buhari not to play politics with this, that he must get to the root of it. I, in the plenary spoke out, it was a live coverage. I said, can a Christian go to the mosque and kill the imam and the worshippers and Nigeria will remain silent? I cannot do that. So I spoke out very strongly and condemned his attitude to it and asked him to order soldiers to Benue and fish out the killers of these people. But if he fails, if he fails to do that, I will hold him responsible as being one of the sponsors, or um, actually the sponsor of the killers. Because this was when the headsmen were killing people every, every day, every night. So uh, that uh, session was uh, on a Wednesday. On Thursday, Buhari ordered soldiers to Benue. By Sunday, they have arrested four persons carrying AK-47, and they paraded them on television, said these were the people who killed those people. So uh, I, I was, I, 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 I heaved a sigh of relief that at least because of the way I turned that out from the chamber over it, uh, it, it was pushed, pushed to act. Otherwise it would have been one of those killings that would be swept under the carpet. But the church has continued to suffer violence, like the one that happened in uh, Owa, in on those states. So these are the risks you take about their faith, you know. So um, the awakening and the consciousness remain with one's up upbringing. Um, like uh, St. Paul said that uh, um, faith without good work is dead faith. You know, you cannot be a Catholic and um, you are casual about your faith. There is nothing, anybody who truly wants to worship God will not find a way of worshiping God in the Catholic Church. So those who run around to uh, other Pentecostal churches and all that are people who are weak in their, in their faith in the Catholic Church. You, you, uh, as a Catholic, you are in a position to aspire to holiness, just like um, Jose Maria Escriva Belagua. You know, now canonized saint, yes. uh, the one that founded Opus Dei. You know, uh, the Opus Dei is uh, about uh, aspiring to holiness through your work. Like you are um, from Catholic television, in your work you try to do everything that is correct. You know, if you are a carpenter, you don't cheat somebody you do work for. Uh, you try to end your your wage, you know, anything you do, you try to avoid anything that is uh, 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 not right. So you can be anything and become a saint. You don't need to be a cardinal or pope to be a saint. Through your work, you can aspire to holiness and become a saint in the end. So it is like that. If, if you're a Catholic and you take your faith seriously, you have lines of devotion that you can follow, and you will never be spiritually poor. Oh, okay. you know? But when you don't uh, do that, you don't go to church on Sundays, uh, during the Easter, you don't do your Easter duty, you don't go to confession, 
you don't receive the Holy Communion. When Catholics file out, you file out. <laughs> you are a man with weak faith. Okay. You have to do all those things you were taught to do from childhood. Let them remain part of your daily lives and you continue to go. I'm, um, uh, I'm a patron of uh, so many societies in the Catholic Church. Uh, in the Lady Council, uh, I'm the provincial mayor of the Catholic Lady Council of Nigeria, Onisha Ak Diocese, and uh, Onisha Ecclesiastical Province. I'm the provincial mayor. Okay. So, so many people. So we relate. Okay. We are bonded with the church. So the church is my life. 